Hey everyone, it's Stephanie. Welcome to my channel. Today I am working on a project I meant to finish last year. I do have some videos on this and they will be in the description area below. Um, let me just give you a little his uh, history, background history of this project. Um, back in 2019, I want to say, I started really getting back into stitching. I was off and on. Um, I remember when I was I was mostly into stitching, I would say cross stitching, especially back um, in the early 2000s when my daughter was born. So, and then throughout the years when I was a teenager, visiting my grandmother, I would do some crocheting. She was trying to teach me that, doing stitching and whatever. And um, so, and then I started incorporating it with my journaling. And I've been journaling and uh, diary writing for like since I was <laughs> since I could write when I was in elementary school and I love it and I love I would add stickers and but anyways um, I also got into painting and it kind of morphed into I would say in the early late 1990s early 2000s a lot of my work really started morphing into like um, mixed media art and so forth um, and that's I guess that was a term for it I'll take my glasses off here anyway so um, I love painting and I would just paint and add like flowers or just fabric or whatever I could find so in 2019 when I got back into it oh also I would um, in the early 2000s when I was making scrapbooks for my daughter um, I would buy canvas and paint canvas and uh, also create scrapbook layouts and stuff with pictures of my daughter and it, that was a lot of fun. I didn't even know other people were doing that um, until I went into an archivers and discovered, like looked on their wall and they had a canvas with uh, scrapbook layouts. I thought, okay, that's super cool. I was so thrilled to know that other people were using that technique of creating art and memories. So back in 2019, I was really like into painting and that's when I started adding some like stitches and a little bit of embroidery and um, I had a lot of like fake flowers and things like that and yarn and I would just create like little landscapes. And I really, at that time, I j did not use uh, YouTube. I really wasn't, really didn't actually know much about it. I know that sounds pretty, yeah, I really didn't. Um, so what I did was, I Googled, uh, I was Googling, okay, mixed media art on canvas. And, you know, I would see some textile, but nothing similar to what I was doing. Okay, I this piece. I just put that there because this little acorn right here is a little awkward right there. I'm not done with this yet, so I need to testing that out to see how I feel about that before I commit to that. <laughs> I'll actually go ahead and put it right here. Um, so I was like, okay, and then I just stopped ser searching because there was nothing really that I was finding that was similar to what I was doing or sort of similar. Um, because I know a lot of people strictly, if they're going to do embroidery on canvas or, you know, do stump work, they're usually, they're using yarn and strictly thread and things like that. So last year, I Googled, or not Googled, I got on U YouTube and I put in a search, mixed media stump work embroidery or something like that. And a few people popped up. Most of them were still, again, just using thread and yarn. And then all of a sudden I kept scrolling. I was like, okay, I'm not gonna give up. And then I came across Susan Taylor Brown. And I was looking at her stuff. I was like, oh, and I was like, okay, wow. So she doesn't use canvas, but 
she uses the hoop and fabrics and stuff and so I started watching some of her um, videos and I was like wow so she's this is she's using a little bit of mixed media in her embroidery which um, I was like okay that's really fascinating and I love the fact that she was using French knots and so anyhow um, so I, I was like okay so she's sort of it's very similar to what I'm doing but her technique and what type of stuff she uses is a, a bit different than mine and she does more uh, her composition is really fantastic um, with mine I just kind of just do what I mean she's more um, I don't know she's on a whole nother level <laughs> And she does this a lot. Like she's really a fantastic artist, um, very talented. And but she has really inspired me, especially last year. She inspired me to get back into this. And so I started with an. I have three pieces I'm working on on canvas. And I started them last year. Again, like I said, I have videos on them, but I never finished them. So I think this year I kind of really want to start working back on them because and eventually I would like to um, invest in a hoop stand because I, I want to start trying I want to do um, a little bit I'm inspired by the fact that she uses a hoop and everything and I want and also I was thinking I have a lot of wool felt and I can I was thinking I can use that as my base and I want to really focus on like building like hills and things like that because I don't I don't really do heels here I mean I, I build up a little bit but not anything like what she's doing her work's just incredible so when I get I like collect my wood pieces and things like this. this is from outdoors I did bake them in the oven this is everything I get outdoors I bake in the oven even like the pine needles I you need to dry them out um, and then yarn here I just kind of what I could have done was like right here I might just go back and create like a hill possibly I'm still thinking about it so what you're gonna do let me tell you a trick you can do if you don't have a lot of supplies uh, you can use yarn and just fabric or if you have a lot of cotton balls in your uh, bathroom grab those cotton balls like say for instance I'm going to use like roving as an example so you grab your roving and you just start separating it and then building it and then you can even put a little bit of linen or something like that over this I would advise using the same color as your base and then you can literally embro like embroider over that, create French knots, do some turkey work, um, do like, there's this one stitch I want to do that Sandra, or not Sandra, that Susan does, I forgot what it's called, it's not the bullion stitch, but it creates these little, um, just another type of almost another type of turkey work if you will <clears throat> not exactly <coughs> excuse me oh I forgot you know what I'll do I forgot the name of the stitch y'all <laughs> and it's really cool I think actually I think it's a great stitch to start with if you're learning the bland stitch but in this particular instance the stitch is not you're not stitching it flat it's the stitch it ends up going straight up like this like turkey work it's really it's a really cool stitch and I will put that in the description area below or no actually in the comment area below I will if I can remember this stitch, I'll have to think about it so I definitely want to I'm gonna what I'm gonna do since I have three canvases I am going to focus on this one and get this done and then work on the next one the next one I painted three canvases and I do or and I do have videos on two of them so I'm thinking about adding some of this to in here I don't know this might be it might be too late to do this 
I might because I kind of want to like soften some of the color here a little bit so what I normally will do I'll just stitch this like turkey work and then um, this is wool so wool cord so I can like yarn so I can just um, separate it and I did do some of that right here but I need to go back in here and do some more and I think that would uh, really help also add ground and texture you can see I'm propping this up a little bit like this so I can work on it <laughs> the bowls so check out that other video because I show you that I do I paint another canvas using darker colors and I cleaned out I've been cleaning out a whole bunch of stuff and I put that canvas somewhere and I cannot I think it's in a storage bin somewhere I'm gonna have to look for it but I've been picking out some of the yarn and that I want to use for that canvas so I'm gonna have to put it in a ziploc bag let me show you some of it until I find that canvas <laughs> but it's a great painting y'all definitely should check that out okay so these yarns recently I got together with my friend Liz let me just put this aside these projects are so much fun y'all they, they really make great gifts too people love them I know it doesn't look like a whole lot right now but once it's complete it will so I'm basically just getting a feel for the land if you will and I can keep going back and adding it as I go along to get it exactly the way I want it. Make sure I don't lose this needle. I'm just going to go ahead and take this out and put it in my... Okay, so we recently got together and we did a huge yarn swap. Um, she gave me a ton. It filled up half a bin of yarn. Um, she is a knitter. Her knits are absolutely incredible. I will... Um, add her Instagram account below in the description area so I'm so far I'm looking through these and I'm, I think I've chosen these for my ne the next canvas piece that I need to start working on and these are great colors I love this green um, using this with some purples I'm going to use some of this roving I think would be great so I do have some greens in the, it's the greens and I have like I painted with Payne's Gray by Nova Colors. So I'm going to keep going through my stash and finding yarns and sock yarn. Like, And a lot of this is hand dyed, hand spun. You should say this is definitely. So I actually love these are probably my two favorite pieces right here. That's going to make some great, like this particular this is going to make great French knots. And I'm going to use a yarn needle to do that. Which I did not do yarn French knots on this piece. I'm just using crochet thread. Uh, this is 10 weight, I think. So, my hands are like stiff today. Okay, so... I'm going to put this in a Ziploc bag and I'll keep adding to it, maybe switch out things and just get it, get that project ready to go as soon as I find the canvas. <laughs> Too funny. Okay. So I hope you um, try out projects like these for like your embroidery. If you're just kind of wanting to do something new, something different, then check out um, Susan Taylor Brown's. A YouTube channel. You just type in her name and her channel will show up. She is, wow, she's talented, she's great, and she's inspiring, and she's, her technique and composition of her work is just truly inspiring. It really is. So. See this, these materials here I think I got this at the Dollar Tree, or it could have been Joann's, but I know I got this this moss at Joann's, and uh, this is potpourri that I got at the Dollar Tree. They have like different colors. I think I have red, 
lavender, purple, blue, and green. I don't know. I think blue. So what I do is I don't like the scents. I have allergies. So I put them, I open the bags up. You can spread it out on like a pan and put it on your back porch and you can air it out for a few days. And it will take the scent away of the potpourri. You can even spray it with something like vinegar, a little bit of water and vinegar. Lightly spray it and then just air it out for a few days if you can or even in a room somewhere that you don't go in or something and that will help because I can't smell these at all now so fantastic anyways so I hope you enjoyed this video and um, I hope you like this video and if you haven't already subscribed to my channel I've got a lot of projects coming up this year and really I'm going to try to focus on getting this piece done and uh, I have some more snippet roll bowls coming up as well. I need to finish uh, my friend Liz's bowl that I started working on. I do have videos on those, so check those out. And uh, my best to you and yours, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye for now.